And being the best version of yourself is a journey. It's a journey that's very similar to the journey of collecting the seven Dragon Balls that we learn about in the Dragon Ball universe. And when you are aware of what that journey is like, when you are aware of what's going to come up for you in that journey and what things to look out for, who to, who to leverage in your life during that journey, you're going to have a more joyful time experiencing your transformation. And it's going to be the type of transformation that you feel empowered by instead of feeling disappointed. It's going to be the type of transformation that helps you show up to yourself fully instead of shrinking in the moments that feels uncomfortable. It's going to be the type of transformation that allows you to be uncomfortably honest with yourself about the things that stretch you so you can be open to receiving with joy. You're going to be able to be the best version of yourself in a way that feels good to you, in a way that is grounded in putting yourself first, in healing with joy, and in loving yourself unconditionally through the entire process so that you can enjoy the journey as much as the motherfucking destination. Hola, mis amores. How is your spirit today? Welcome to another episode of the Yanori Ponso podcast, where each episode is a love letter to the future version of myself and to every single intuitive Black woman healing with joy. Today, I want to share with you four lessons that the seven Dragon Balls have taught me about being the best version of myself. I want to talk to you about this because Being the best version of myself is really important to me. It's one of the things that guides me. It's one of the things that helps me create a life that I love. And it's one of the things that allows me to enjoy the human experience, which sometimes, let's be honest, can feel freaking uncomfortable. So today I want to peel back the layers around what it has meant to be the best version of me. And I want to connect it to one of my favorite shows of all time, which is the Dragon Ball universe. This is something that I'm really passionate about. I love Dragon Ball. I have learned so much from this show, from this universe, and I am excited to bring this part of myself into the podcast because I know I'm not the only anime mommy in here who is into Dragon Ball, who's into the lessons that come from this particular show, and I want to bring those to the forefront for all of us. So I first learned about the Dragon Ball universe when I was a little girl. I was living in Honduras in this community called Santa Rosa de Agua, where I am from, my family's from, Santa Rita community. And there were two channels that we were able to access without cable. And the, one of those, I think there were actually one channel for kids. And on that channel, there were two shows that came on. One of the shows was Dragon Ball and another one was Barney. I talk a lot about this briefly in the previous episode I recorded where I talked about the passing of Akira Toriyama, who was the creator of Dragon Ball. So I start watching this show, y'all, and I'm hooked. Like, I love this show. I'm waiting every week because if you watch Dragon Ball, you know they were giving us tiny episodes and make it, and we had to wait a whole week for the next episodes and not much was happening in this episodes. But I loved it. I connected with this character so much. I connected with the storyline and I developed a real passion for this particular show. As an adult, I'm really interested in the intersectionality of spirituality, healing, and storytelling. And I'm going to my childhood to look at what were the shows that I connected with and the things I connected with that helped me feel at home. And the Dragon Ball universe is at the top of that list. I've been watching and re-watching it over the years. I actually started watching it again a few weeks ago from the beginning in preparation for sharing these episodes with y'all about how Dragon Ball can be a very powerful tool for us to learn about ourselves and to help us be the best version of ourselves. And today I'm kicking off this episode and I feel like I'm going to do at least one a month where I talk about it because when I tell you I'm into it, I'm into it. And I was talking to my husband, JP, And he actually wants us to do some reaction videos to some of these episodes on our family channel, which we're going to be revamping and releasing very soon on YouTube. So I'll be sharing more with that, more of that with you later. Today, we're going to focus on a few things though. I want to share with you what it means to be the best version of yourself, because I want us to be on the same page as I'm using this specific language. And I'm sharing this with us because I know that if you are here and you're watching this, it's because you two are committed to being the best version of yourself. 
And being the best version of yourself is a journey. It's a journey that's very similar to the journey of collecting the seven Dragon Balls that we learn about in the Dragon Ball universe. And when you are aware of what that journey is like, when you are aware of what's going to come up for you in that journey and what things to look out for, who to, who to leverage in your life during that journey, you're going to have a more joyful time experiencing your transformation. And it's going to be the type of transformation that you feel empowered by instead of feeling disappointed. It's going to be the type of transformation that helps you show up to yourself fully instead of shrinking in the moments that feels uncomfortable. It's going to be the type of transformation that allows you to be uncomfortably honest with yourself about the things that stretch you so you can be open to receiving with joy. You're going to be able to be the best version of yourself in a way that feels good to you, in a way that is grounded in putting yourself first, in healing with joy, and in loving yourself unconditionally through the entire process so that you can enjoy the journey as much as the motherfucking destination. So. The four things you're going to learn today are what it means to be the best version of you, what it takes to be the best version of you, why being the best version of you is so key, especially if you are a black woman that desires to heal with joy and love herself unconditionally. And then I'm going to walk you through the four lessons the seven Dragon Balls taught me about being the best version of me. I'm also going to share with you an affirmation to help you anchor yourself and a journaling prompt to unearth some of the things that are going to help you be the best version of you so that you can show up in alignment with who you desire to be. Listen, if you are listening to this on Apple Podcast, I'm about to talk to you real quick right now. If you're listening to this episode, please show us some love. And you can do this by leaving us a five-star or a six-star review on Apple Podcast. Now, the Yanori Ponzo Podcast is a video podcast. So make sure that you head to the show notes and you grab the link to our YouTube channel so that you can get the full podcast experience that we're going to offer for you. The last, the third thing I want to share with you that if you are catching this on YouTube, remember to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so that you can be the first to learn as soon as we drop the episodes. I am officially a YouTube gal, and I hear that this is really important on YouTube, so help me out, support me by making sure that you subscribe and that you hit the notification bell so that you can find out as soon as we release an episode, because if you are here, it's because this interests you, and I'm going to drop gems for you that interest you. Now, if you are a Black woman that desires to heal in community with other loving and compassionate Black women that are on that same journey... I want to invite you to join the Selfda Society. The Selfda Society is the go-to space for intuitive Black women leaders that are loving themselves unconditionally, overflowing with inner calm and mental peace. And they are doing this no matter what happens in their lives. This is a community, a sisterhood that I have curated specifically for women of the African diaspora. To join us, you can head to theselfjustsociety.com to grab the link, or you can grab the link in the show notes, and you can actually test it out for 30 days on me by using one of our guest passes. Okay. So I connected with the Seven Dragon Balls when I was a little girl, and as an adult, I've been re-watching the show again. And part of what I've been watching about this show as an adult is really looking at the intersection of spirituality and storytelling and healing, particularly healing with joy that helps me be the best version of myself. And I can't turn that off. Anytime I'm looking at something, I'm paying attention to how is this going to help me be a better version of myself? How is this going to support me? How is this going to ensure that I show up fully? And to be honest with you, it's been really fascinating seeing this because while this show was made for kids, it's made by adults. So there's always symbolism embedded in this show that we are watching as children. There are always nuances that we may not catch as kids that when we grow up and we see that we see it again, we start to notice that this is actually what was going on. And if you're watching me on YouTube, you may peep the shirt for today. Boom. She got her, hold on y'all. She got her turtle. A turtle, Dragon Ball turtle symbol on because we are ready and dressed for the part. So I'm all about this life. Before I jump into how this 
the lessons that I learned from Dragon Ball, I want to talk about what it means to be the best version of you, though. What it means to be the best version of you, this is in my experience, in the things that I have learned from working with clients for over the past 14 years, helping them be the best version of themselves. It really comes down to showing up fully in your life and authentically as the person you desire to be. Because the best version of you doesn't have to prove itself. The best version of you is at a peace with who she is and how she shows up. Oftentimes, we're not showing up as the best version of ourselves because we're very focused on wanting to be liked, wanting to be approved, wanting to sit, sit in the energy of people pleasing, wanting to be in the energy of overthinking, of perfectionism, of trying to control other people. And when we are operating in that space, y'all, it's very difficult for us to be the best version of ourselves because the best version of ourselves moves in alignment. She is intuitively led. If the voice of God within her says, do this, she's not questioning it. She's taking action knowing that whatever she's going to do is going to support her and it's going to unfold for her highest good and that of humanity. Most of us, however, haven't learned to navigate life in this way. I didn't learn to navigate life in this way. I've been teaching myself this over the years. I've gone and unearthed beliefs and looked at how I was acting versus how I thought I was acting in order to create space to be the woman I am right now. So if you are desiring to be the best version of you, you got to understand that this means that you are going to be put in a situation where you're going to be called to be uncomfortable. And this actually is the first lesson that I learned from the seven Dragon Balls. You have to be willing to seek your healing and awaken your highest self. You got to be willing to seek it out. One of the things we learn in the Dragon Ball universe are about the seven Dragon Balls. So if you are new to the Dragon Ball world, let me just bring you up to speed really quickly. The Dragon Ball world is about this character. His name is Goku. And Goku is a character that is on, in Earth, on Earth. And he's raised by this man that gives him or leaves him a momentum of a Dragon Ball. It's this ball that has four stars on it. At the time, he doesn't really know what it is, but this star becomes a symbol in the universe of Dragon Ball because there's been many seasons, many sagas that we have experienced since it was first released, I believe, in 1986. And... The story takes shape when Goku begins to meet people. He meets this particular character, her name is Bulma, who wants to collect the seven Dragon Balls. That's when he actually learns that there are seven of these Dragon Balls and not just one. And when you bring the seven Dragon Balls together, something powerful happens. You get to ask a wish from a dragon that arises from the Dragon Balls, and this dragon, this dragon grants you a wish, whatever you want that is within the power of that particular dragon to create. So in order for you to even be in a position to ask for the wish that you desire, you got to be willing to find the seven Dragon Balls. And the seven Dragon Balls are actually scattered all over the earth. So it's not like you can just find them really quickly. And the interesting thing about that too is that in that journey, if after you get your wish granted, it takes about a year for you to be able to use them again. They actually turn into regular stones after a wish has been granted. So they actually go on inactive for a while, which means that if you're looking for them, you got to wait at least a year after somebody has gotten a wish. And you have to be willing to go all over the world to find these Dragon Balls so that you can get your wish granted by bringing them together in the first place. And this is very similar to how it is when being the best version of yourself, because like I said, being the best version of yourself is a journey, right? And in this journey, you got to be willing to seek out your own healing. You got to be willing to awaken your higher self. And that means that you got to be willing to step outside of your comfort zone. You got to be willing to go into parts of you that you may not have gone to before, because it is in those parts of you that you're going to find those symbols of the Dragon Balls. You're going to find those parts of you that are going to help you unearth the best version of yourself. You're going to find the parts of you that have learned to show up in the energy of people pleasing. You're going to find the parts of you that knows how to show up powerfully and confidently. You're going to find that part of you that is able to see yourself uncomfortable, uncomfortably and be honest about how you are. 
And you're going to find those parts of you that can help you do that with ease and with flow. So when you are showing up as the best version of you, it means that you got to be willing to go seek yourself out. You got to be willing, you got to be willing to go and look at yourself. Most of us are not willing to do that, especially those of us that are women, especially those of us that tend to be black women, because we got a lot of shit going on. We are raising families. We are nurturing families. Most of us have been taught to be the anchor of our families. So it's very difficult for us to feel like we have the space to go inside ourselves and begin to dig and look at who we are being versus who we think we're being and put ourselves first so that we can understand where we are. Most of us actually have a very difficult time putting ourselves first. And to be able to go within yourself, it requires that you put yourself first. It requires that you show up to yourself fully. And this is what it takes for us to do this work. And this is why you got to be willing to seek your own healing. This is why you got to be willing to awaken the higher self. One thing that I learned from a shaman was that the higher self, and I talked about this in my previous episode, the higher self is not something that lives up here and is judging us. The higher self is actually our shadow. Is the parts of us that are lurking in the darkness. And what we do is we go to those parts of us and we bring the light into those parts of us with love and with compassion. And what starts to happen is that the highest self emerges out of that. Because we can love on ourselves, we begin to see that we can also love on others. You see what I'm saying? You picking up what I'm putting down? This is how it comes together. At least this is what I've learned and what I've seen in my life and in the lives of my clients. This is what it takes to be the best version of you. Now, one of the things that I see with myself, and I also see this with the women that I work with, is that we have a difficult time accepting help. We have a very difficult time accepting help from others. We have developed a very unhealthy relationship with the idea of receiving help, of asking for help, of being supported. I'm going to be honest with you. For a while, I did see asking for help as a sign of weakness. It's something that I picked up around life and I held on to. I was never the type of person that was screaming to do a group project. I was always a person to be like, yo, leave me alone. Let me work by myself. I am not interested in working with other people. And as a result of that, I've had a difficult time in my life being supported because I thought I had to do it all by myself. And I know this isn't just my story. I know this is the story of pretty much every single Black woman that I know. There are very few Black women in my life that I know that grew up open to receiving help. I know many women, especially Black women of the diaspora, that have learned to receive help. Very few that I know that we race with the openness to be helped all the time. I actually can't really even think about one right now. That's how much we are taught that we have to do these things on our own. And that's how much we wear it as a badge of honor. And the second thing that the Dragon Balls, the seven Dragon Balls have taught me is that you got to be willing to leverage the beauty of relationships. You got to be willing to be supported. In order to find the seven Dragon Balls around the the world, Goku and his friends, they actually work together because they have different tools that help them find these Dragon Balls. I mean, we're talking about being all over the world. Specifically, as a character, and I mentioned her already, her name is Bulma. She's a core piece of this puzzle because she's extremely smart. So she develops this radar that can pick up the frequency that the Dragon Balls emit. And that's how she's able to identify where they are in the world. That's actually how she meets Goku because she creates the radar that takes her to where Goku lives so that she can find the Dragon Ball that he has, which is the four-star Dragon Ball. And as a result of that, they begin to go on the journey together of finding the rest of them. And that's how their relationship gets built. And over the journey of the Dragon Ball universe and the way that this evolves over time, they grow up to be very close friends. And that becomes a big part of their ability to save Earth over and over again. Now, what does this have to do with us? Well, in your journey to being the best version of yourself, it's going to be very important that you learn how to be supported. 
Because when you're being the best version of you, you're going to learn a lot of things about yourself in that journey because it is a journey and you're going to be discovering yourself. And when you go to the discovering piece of your journey, and I talked about the discovering part of our healing journey in a previous episode that I'm going to link for you. I believe it was the episode where I share about, it was rebuild your confidence with joy in four simple steps. So I'm going to link that for y'all in the show notes. But in that episode, I went in depth into what the healing journey is like in the four stages that you're going to experience in your healing journey. One of those stages is the stage of discovery where you're going to be discovering yourself. And when you start to discover yourself, you're going to discover very quickly that there are things about you that you are stretched by. There are things about you that you may not like that you desire to shift. And in order to shift those things, it's going to be important that you put yourself in community or with people around you that know how to do those things. It's going to be important that you surround yourself with folks that have been where you're headed and that can help you get there with ease and with flow. It's actually the reason why I launched the Self to Society because most of the women that I work with, they haven't been there before. They haven't been in a place where they can discover themselves and shed parts of themselves with ease and with joy. They have not been open to healing with joy because people around them aren't healing with joy. And that's why I started that community because I wanted people to have, especially black women specifically, to have a space where they can go through the healing process with joy, knowing that they're not alone in it. Most of us, we are learning this for the very first time right now. And one of the things that the Dragon Balls, the seven Dragon Balls can teach us is that there is power in leveraging our relationships. There is beauty in being supported. Because when Goku and his friends work together, they are able to locate this Dragon Balls in a sn- like, like it's nothing. Very, very quickly and very easily too. But when they are going at it by themselves, they don't have a very easeful time doing it. They have a very challenging time doing it. And it is the same thing that happens with us. When we are being the best version of ourselves, guess what? When we're going at it alone, we tend to have a very challenging time doing it. I know, I've done it. And when I open myself up to be supportive, when I'm open myself up to working with mentors, to hearing other people's perspective, to learning about the parts of me that challenge me, when I'm open to being like, well, why does that challenge me? Why does that stretch me? I'm already giving you some extra drawing prompts that are not even the ones I intended to. Questions you can ask yourself. Why does this stretch me? Why does this challenge me? Why am I having a difficult time with this situation? That's when you can begin to grow. That's when you can begin to emerge with the higher version of you because you're taking your compassion and your love to the parts of you that are feeling uncomfortable. So that is the second lesson that we can learn from the Dragon Balls, the seven Dragon Balls. That's the second lesson that he has taught me is I have to be willing to leverage the beauty of relationships. I have to be willing to be supported because when I'm supported, things in my life move a lot easier and more joyful too. Because when I'm supported, I can focus on the things that I'm really good at instead of focusing on the things that I'm trying to quote unquote learn to be good at. I can focus on what I'm good at and then I can have people that are good at what they are good at help me get better at the things that stretch me. Life is just so much more joyful when you move like that. And the best version of you can emerge in a more joyful and loving way as well. And this is why it's important for us to to heal. It's important for us to show up as the best version of ourselves with with the healing process as Black women, because we have not learned this, especially the Black women that I attract, the Black women that work with me, they've had a difficult time being supported. And in order for you to show up fully, you will have to learn to be supported. It is just what it is. And I want to hear from you right now. Like, let me know in the comments below. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, grab the link to YouTube from the show notes and go below this video and let me know How do you feel about support? Are you open to being supported? Do you enjoy being supported? Did you grow up feeling like you can be supported? Because I know there are some of you out there that did grow up like that. And I want you to come in here and show yourself so that we know that that's also happening. Your presence is so important because you are shifting how support 
works. If you have kids, you are teaching them that they can be supported. And I celebrate you and I celebrate your parents and the people in your life that taught you those values because they are so important. So come to the comments below and let us know. Show us what it's like, what that has been like for you. And if you didn't grow up like that, let me know also in the comments so that I can share with you what has helped me. Okay, the third lesson that I learned from the seven Dragon Balls is that you got to accept that being the best version of yourself is going to feel uncomfortable at times. When they're called the sea fighters. So when the sea fighters in the Dragon Ball universe are looking for the Dragon Balls and they're being the best version of themselves, it can be uncomfortable. I think about Goku, for example, because he's really willing to step himself out of his comfort zone and he doesn't see difficult things as a challenge, as something bad. He sees it as something that feels exciting. And when you're being the best version of yourself, it's going to feel uncomfortable to be you. It's going to feel uncomfortable to show up fully. And when Goku makes the decision to go look for the Dragon Balls with his friends and he leaves certain things behind, not everybody's okay with that. Not everybody's okay with how he tends to show up as a character either. Because he is willing to step out for what he desires, even if that means he's staying outside of the traditional norm of what it means to be a father or what it means to be a husband of what it might even mean to be a friend. Because when he's fighting against foes, he'd be willing to help them. That is what it means to be the best version of him. He's willing to help them and support them, even if they just try to kill him. He still will show up for them. And that's not something that the character is like. That's not something that some of his friends support. So when you are being the best version of you, and you're showing up in alignment with who you desire to be, there are moments where people are not going to like how you're showing up. There are moments where people are not going to approve of how you're showing up because you're not showing up in the way that they have been taught is the right way to show up. It's because you're not showing up in the way that they have learned is the acceptable way of showing up. And it is important that as you are being the best version of you, that you are aware and that, that you got to accept that not everybody's going to fuck with it because they are operating out of their own programming. They are operating out of their own conditioning. They are operating out of the things that they have been taught. And when you begin to show up fully and authentically and from a position of being empowered, not everybody's going to be all right with that. And that doesn't mean that you're doing something wrong. Because the interesting thing about Goku looking for the Dragon Balls is that he always gets his wish granted. He always finds a way to get his wish granted. And those people that are out of alignment, those characters that are out of alignment, they don't have the same faith. They rarely get their gifts granted because their gifts are granted in wanting things that are superficial or wanting things that are not for the highest good of humanity versus what Goku's wishes are granted. They are granted on the goodness of the world. They are granted on making things better. They are granted in supporting people in his life. So when you are moving in alignment and you're showing up as, a, as the best version of yourself, even if people are, are not messing with it, it doesn't mean you're doing something wrong. It doesn't mean that you got to change. And that's something that I learned from the Dragon Balls because I see over and over again who's getting their wish granted and who isn't. And the, pe the characters that get their wish granted tend to be the characters that are moving in alignment, that are being the best version of themselves and that are doing it for the highest good in, of themselves and of humanity. And I feel like as women, we tend to hide the best version of ourselves. We tend to hide her because of what other people may think, because how other people feel about her. We tend to hide our confidence because we don't want people to feel bad. We tend to hide our boldness because we want people to feel like we're making them feel some type of way. We tend to hide our creativity because we don't want people to get upset at us. And in reality, no one can be upset at you when you're being the best version of you. And even if they are feeling upset, they're not upset at you. They are upset at what you're triggering within them. If they don't have that within themselves, you can't trigger it. And that's a lesson I've had to learn. Like, 
When I'm being Yonori in my full expression and somebody doesn't like it, it has nothing to do with me. It has to do with what they have been taught, who they have learned to be, and how they feel knowing that somebody's choosing not to be that way. It is not me, though. I am simply a catalyst for them to see that that's living inside of them. And that's important to know when you're being the best version of yourself because that is going to come up. You hear me? That's going to come up. Okay, the last lesson I've learned from the seven dragon bulls about being the best version of myself is be open to going through the journey of transformation over and over again. Be open to go through the journey of transformation over and over again. In the Dragon Ball universe, like I shared earlier, after the Dragon Balls get used, you got to wait a whole year before you can use them again. That means that that process of going and looking at for the seven Dragon Balls all over the world has to happen every single time because they get scattered every time. And there are parts of the show where you actually, they actually got to go and look for Dragon Balls in different planets. They go and look for Dragon Balls in different universes. So the scope of what they're searching just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And when we are going through the healing process with joy and we're looking at ourselves, we tend to think that it's going to happen one time and then we're done. We tend to be like, well, I already, I'm already healed from that. Like any time I used to say, I'm already healed from that. As I reflect back, I'm seeing how little I understood about the healing process in that part of my life. Because when you're going through healing process and you're doing it with joy, you are aware that you're going to go through this process over and over again. Healing is going to happen over and over and over again. And it's going to happen in moments when it feels comfortable. It's going to happen in moments when it feels uncomfortable. It's going to happen in moments when it feels good. It's going to happen in moments that it does not, quote unquote, feel good. And it doesn't mean we got to stop, y'all. Because when we're going through the healing process, we are learning to journey life. And life moves in seasons. The same way that we have a season for spring, for fall, for summer, for winter, in our healing journey, we too are going to experience those seasons. And those are the stages I talked about in the episode that I released. I believe it was three weeks ago. And it was March 14th. I released this episode. It's episode number 68 called Rebuild Your Confidence with Joy in Four, in Four Simple Steps. That's what I'm talking about there. There is a season when you're going to be discovering yourself. Then there's a season where you're shedding what you didn't like, that you learned. Then there's a season where you are embodying what you discovered, that you liked. And then there is a season where you are integrating what you have learned into every area of your life. And then you go through the cycles all over again. You go through this process over and over again, similar to the characters in the Dragon Ball universe that are looking for the Dragon Balls over and over again. You are looking for your own internal Dragon Balls over and over again. You're looking for the parts of you that help you show up as the best version of yourself. And one of the things I learned from YouTube, actually, is that there's a theory that the seven Dragon Balls actually symbolize the chakra system, the seven chakra system. And if you're not familiar with, with the seven chakras, let me know in the comments if you like a video on that and I can do a whole breakdown on the seven chakras because those of you that are in your spiritual bag is a beneficial thing to know about. And if you have been doing spirituality for a while, if, you, if you've been connecting yourself for a while, then you already probably know about it. Let me know if you would like me to do a video on it though and then I can do a deep dive. But essentially the seven chakra system is a system that highlights seven energy centers that are within our bodies. And when those energy centers move in alignment and in flow, your life shows up in a way that is fully embodying the best version of who you are. You are speaking up for yourself. You are expressing your sensuality and your sexuality. You are releasing beliefs that are in alignment with you. You are allowing God to pour into you and pouring that into others. You are loving on people and you are loving on yourself. You are showing up with compassion and with grace. And you are experiencing life from a position of what's considered high vibration. So when you think about the seven chakras and the seven dragon balls as the same, when the seven dragon balls come together, there's an awakening of a dragon that occurs that gives you your wish. Well, when the seven chakras are in alignment and they are in flow, 
there is something called the awakening of the Kundalini that helps you awaken to higher levels of consciousness. That's not what this video is about, but if you want me to go deeper into that, let me know and I can totally do that. Share with me in the comments below this video. And if you are on Apple Podcasts, head to the YouTube channel and let me know what you think and let me know what you feel and let me know what you want so that I can create it because we are co-creating magic together. So you got to be open. You got to be open because as you heal and as you go through the healing journey with joy, you're going to find new things to heal. You're going to find new parts of yourself to bring love to, to bring compassion to. You're going to find new thoughts to release and new ways of being to let go of and new things to embrace about yourself and to go through this process over and over again and do it in a way that serves you. Joy has to be at the center of it. Because when you're doing things with joy, you do it with enthusiasm, you do it with an appreciation, you do it with love versus where you're doing things with an attitude, you're not really fucking with it. And you've worked with people before that are doing things with an attitude. Do you want to work with those people? Do you want to be around them? I know you don't because I know I don't. As opposed to when you're moving out of love and compassion and appreciation and you have patience and you're moving at your own pace. Oh, I, want, I love being around people that are like that. I love being around people that are willing to do the difficult thing and to do it with love. That's why I love Goku so much as a character because he moves through difficult situations with love and with ease and with flow. And that's one of the things that I feel like connects with me at a deep level. That's the type of symbolism that's embedded in the Dragon Ball universe that helps me be the best version of myself. It's that reminder that no matter what I go through, I can choose how I approach it. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. All right. So those are the four lessons I had for you that I've learned from the seven Dragon Balls on being the best version of myself. Number one, be willing to seek out your healing and awaken your highest self. Number two, leverage the beauty of relationships. Be willing to be supported. Number three, accept that being the best version of yourself will feel uncomfortable at times. Number four, be open to going through the journey of transformation over and over again. Like I promise you, I want to give you a affirmation and a journal and prompt to help you. Your journal and prompt is, here's what brings me joy about showing up as the best version of me. Journal on that. What brings you joy about showing up as the best version of you? What brings you excitement about showing up as the best version of you? Your affirmation is, I can choose to be the best version of me right now. Because you can. You always have a choice. You may not be able to control the events in your life. You may not be able to control how people show up in your life. You can always control how you show up to those situations and how you show up to those people. You can control you. And when you anchor yourself in that belief and in that knowing, and you show up like that, guess what? The best version of you is going to be present at every step of the way. And that's what it means to enjoy the journey as much as the destination, y'all. That's exactly what that looks like. So if you enjoyed today's episode, number one, let me know in the comments below of our YouTube channel. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts, remember, head to the YouTube channel. First of all, before you head to the YouTube channel, give us some love. Leave us a five-star or a six-star review. Then remember this is a video podcast. So head to the YouTube channel, grab the show notes, the link from the show notes below, and get the full experience. Check out my awesome Dragon Ball top I have on today to bring me into alignment with what we're talking about. Get with the vibes. And if you're catching this on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you are the first to know as soon as I drop an episode. If you are a Black woman who desires to go through the healing journey, who desires to be the best version of themselves and is open to being supported and is open to being helped in this journey and doing it with love and with compassion, surrounded by other amazing, dope Black women that are healing and healing with joy, I want to invite you to join the self to Society. To do it, you got to head to the self to Society.com so that you can 
be a part of our sisterhood. You can also grab the link for it. It's in the show notes below as well. This is a space for intuitive Black women that are healing with joy, that are learning to love themselves unconditionally, and are overflowing with inner calm and mental peace. Because that's what I desire for every single one of you. That's what I've been able to experience in my life. And I am so much more happy because of it. My life is a lot more joyful because of it. And the people that are around me are also experiencing that joy in their lives because when you begin to heal, you are igniting a chain reaction of transformation around you. People around you have no choice. They also begin to heal because you are healing on your own and they begin to see what's possible. So whether they know it or not, they too are healing. In the next episode, I'm going to be talking about what it takes to lose and keep weight off. In doing this with ease, with a holistic approach that leaves you feeling empowered and encouraged so that you can show up to yourself with unconditional love. I've been on a journey of loving myself for over 14 years and weight loss is the type of thing that is not an issue for me. It comes very easy for me to do. And there are some things that you want to look out for in that journey though. So I want to talk about it because I know this is a bit something that's really important to a lot of women, especially black women. We are constantly talking about the relationship we have with our bodies and healing with joy requires having a body that can sustain the healing process. So I want to get deeper into what that means and how you can do it for yourself. Because again, I mean, I don't have, weight loss is not a problem for me. I can do it in my sleep and I want to support those of you that may be having a difficult time with it. Thank you for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Hasta luego, mis amores.